I'm Ed, and I'd like to ask you a question. You ever playing Bioshock? Sorry, it's just that for the moment uh, things are getting... I'm just sorting out a few things, gonna have a few changes. And I was just trying to keep the channel going with a, some light and fluffy content. Nothing too heavy. And, uh... I'm just going to chat a bit about video games, specifically Bioshock. You know, the one where you go in that sort of bathosphere down to that sort of uh, art deco place. Rapture, that's the place. And uh, I'm going to talk about the politics of it. I mean, seriously. I want to get into the politics of this. I mean... <laughs> I mean, hey, far be it from me to stop you. I mean, I did a video on that on my timeline. In my timeline, while uh, wandering around the streets of Chernigov. Oh yeah, it's called Chernigov because the Soviet Union broke up in your timeline. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, well, another... F well, one of the other features of my timeline is the fact that the culture war never happened. So... I mean, do you really want your politics to be brought into this? Oh, oh no, no. I mean, this isn't really a political video. I mean, I might set up an OnlyFans account to talk about politics on. fully clothed, so why not make an OnlyFans account? That way, of course, the YouTube channel can feel a bit more chill. But anyway, you know, more to the point. This isn't so much about politics, but the medium it's represented in. How's that? <laughs> oh, I'm sure that would be cool. I mean, I'm just looking out for you, buddy. Just didn't want to... You know, I just like to make sure everyone's okay. You know, it's part of me. I guess it's part of my libertarian values. Personal responsibility means looking out for other people. You know? And while there isn't a COVID pandemic in my timeline, there is in yours, so... Make sure every... So, how about you all get vaccinated? Gotta look out for each other. Awesome. That's what being a libertarian's all about. Personal freedom and personal responsibility. So we take care of each other. Well, hope you have a good time. <laughs> you might see some of the other ads from other alternate timelines pro cropping up. It's a good thing that all those, all the endings videos are still being made, but <clears throat> better let you get back to it. Well, thanks. And, uh, well, I just wanted to say, yeah, the alternate timeline Ed was correct about getting vaccinated, and, uh, well, let's also try and be pleasant to each other in the comments section. You know, the political message of Bioshock. Well, a lot of people have their own interpretations of it, but <clears throat> I'm really thinking more about how it was conveyed because I heard a lot about the politics of Bioshock and then I got playing it and, well, I mean, to be honest with you guys, I wasn't feeling it. <clears throat> it was, and, you know, plenty of other people were. I mean, after all, oh, you may have thought, perhaps you were thinking something like this. Hmm. Exactly.
this is what happens when you lack government and infrastructure. Or maybe this. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just what happens in a world with no flag or altar. Perhaps maybe this. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you lack diversity and accountability. So you were thinking this. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's an idea, but it's just not, I mean, it's not really a thing. I mean, let's face it, in real capitalism, there wouldn't be one man with a monopoly over the entire city. That's um, just a little bit bizarre. Real capitalism would be deregulated, and there'd be lots of little people all owning their little bits of rapture, and uh, it'd be like that. It wouldn't be all under the auspices of one guy. It's not real capitalism, of course. Perhaps maybe this? <sighs> Yet more communist propaganda. But of course, uh, Here's what I was actually thinking. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if that corpse, that corpse has any bullets on them. Yeah, these splices. Ugh. Yeah, it normally takes more bullets to pick them off than they have on them, on them, which is annoying. Yeah, not normally drop enough money to. Now we to buy more bullets. Uh, maybe I'm gonna use some more plasma as well. Uh, yeah, I better get more ammo. Cause you see, I had wondered whether I was perhaps not getting the story, you know, I've got autism and uh, not really good at stuff like understanding the uh, hidden metaphors and all that but I was just chatting with someone in the comments section of a video and I was think and I actually thought yeah I just wanted to, vote to uh, express my opinions on the game and I felt that I really wasn't able to really engage with the politics because I was only really able to engage with any of the people in Rapture down the barrel of a down the barrel of a Tommy gun or shotgun you know what I mean probably over 90% of the people you encounter will try and kill you. And the trouble is, that's not really very conducive for political messaging, I don't think. Not a problem with the writing, not a problem with the scripting, but the problem is, making it a first-person shooter, it re when there's only really one way of interacting with the environment, or maybe a few if we count picking up ammo and such. Plus, of course, the NPCs you talk to, it's largely scripted. I mean, the main difference I could find in Bioshock Infinite, sorry, in Bioshock, the main choice you really have is either kill the little sisters or save them. I went with the save them option, partly because, I don't know if it was the difficulty setting, but I was getting more Adam than I could actually use while saving them. And, well, I didn't, you know, felt I didn't really want to kill them, and 
I think, and there was no real, there was no practical benefit, at least on the difficulty setting I had, probably. I know maybe the difficulty setting makes it more, but really, that's not even a, a politics issue. That's more about just simple morality. And really, the only way you could interact, you could really do much interacting with the world of Rapture, is shooting. Now, perhaps, if it had been more of a role-playing game, it would have worked better. Not, you know, not everyone, not, not pretty much everyone tries to kill you as soon as they see you, unless you interact with them in a certain way. So, the splicers perhaps aren't trying to kill you all the time? Unless you've done stuff, done deliberate action in order to make them hostile, but you're equally capable of making them friendly. Apart from, I mean, I'm not talking about that. Well, I think it was a bit like mind control in the game, where you could turn a big daddy. Or convert. But. There isn't really much in the way of in... I mean, that would be a, it's an interesting analogy, really. Sort of like the difference between Age of Empires and Civilization. You know how in Civilization there's the Conquest victory, the Science victory, Religion victory in Civ Six, the Diplomacy victory... ...and so on. And in Age of Empires, while, while there is wonder victory, and you can convert most units you'll see in a random map, it's still very much a sort of conquest game. Game, partly because, of course, if they destroy your wonder before the timer runs out, the game continues, and so on and so forth. It's very much combat oriented. And for me, the politics of Bioshock it wasn't conveyed very well, I don't think, because it's a first person shooter. Sort of like how... I mean, that's another good idea. Example. Call of Duty, or Medal of Honor, or any World War II first-person shooter. You know, when you're playing the Allies... Allies... You know... You hear the German, you hear the, you hear the Nazis, and such. And bang, bang, bang. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And, well, in a sense, you don't really need to engage with the politics any further because you've got the Nazis. We all agree the Nazis were bad. It's a pretty simple hero-villain story. You are the hero. <laughs> villain is the Nazis. Or their allies, if it's something like Medal of Honor, Rising Sun, or Pacific Assault. And, uh, well... You know, you're fighting the Axis. The trouble is, that's fine with, you know, a real thing, with a real world setting like World War II. We know the Nazis. We know who they were. And we know why we don't like them they were a genocidal regime trying to destroy all our freedoms.
pretty straightforward. The trouble is, any kind of discourse on, well, Iron Rand's thinking, it really doesn't go well if your only real way of interacting is they're trying to kill you so you shoot first, you know? There's no real critique, no real sort of like understanding of Andrew Ryan. You don't can't really see Andrew Ryan as much. So I really think that uh, the, the, the genre of the game kind of made it harder to tell the story or discuss the ideas that they seem to want to discuss, this sort of <sighs> Randian thinking. I mean, how true it is to Iron Rand's philosophy, I'm not familiar enough with her work. I actually think both Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite would have worked better as multi-ended role-playing games. Say something like, I don't know, Fallout New Vegas is... I was just... essentially too busy clearing out rooms in the firefight to really gain much ability to understand this sort of nuance, so, I don't know, perhaps a few factions here and there you can build a relationship with, you can really understand what their motivations are, and have multiple endings where you can, you know, bring them down, destroy the whole place, or install someone new, give you more options. I just think that would have been better for conveying for talking about the politics than just a very simple first-person shooter, which just doesn't feel like it really has the mechanics to let you discuss these ideas. But, well, hope you didn't mind me rambling for a bit. <laughs> and i uh, just like to say thank you for watching. Let's be nice to each other in the comments, and uh, it's lovely, and it was lovely having you here.